Uh, my name is Paul Spadia. I, uh, <coughs> I stayed here because I am the uh, political action uh, chairman for Wallen Wal Lake Rod and Gun Club, and I have a, a responsibility to our almost 700 members to represent them here tonight. Great club. Does a lot of great things in the community in Boroughville. They, they do. They, they Fish and Derby for the for the children. We have, we have the charities. We have uh, fish and derbies for, for for the kids. You you name it, the, the the club supports it. And I mean, Boy Scouts from all over the state come and camp out on our grounds. I mean, it, it, I can't say enough good things about the club. But also, we have built. We just did a million dollars worth of renovations to our club. <laughs> because we did that. We can now sponsor nationally sanctioned events. If things like magazine bans happen and it makes it harder for people to come to us, we may not be able to do that. And now the, the membership body is going to be holding the, the tab for a million dollars. And if, if, we can't, <coughs> if we can't pay our bills, well, then we're not going to be able to do the things for the community that we do. Feed, feeding the kids, you know, uh, clothing drives, uh, Halloween parties. There's just so much that the club does above and beyond shooting. I mean, we have uh, the Department of Corrections come and use our range. We have probably at least a half a dozen, if not a dozen, other police departments that come and use our club because it's, just, it's such a great place. <laughs> we even keep one section open specifically for all them that the club members won't even use just in case police want to come and you know we work around their schedule so I'd like to keep it that way I would like to keep uh, keep things where they are I want to uh, I want to address specifically the magazine ban which you know th there's there's a couple of things that nobody has said I collect firearms and I don't know if I have $100,000 worth of firearms or if I have $50,000. It depends on the market. But I do know that part of the value of what I have is in the original magazine. And, you know, people, people are calling them high-capacity magazines. Well, my, my FN 5.7 pistol came with a standard magazine of 20 rounds. My, one of my AR-15s, there was a police department turn-in, and on the magazine is mocked police came with 30 rounds standard so it's not a high capacity magazine I have <coughs> I have a reproduction Thompson that came with a 50 round drum standard with that gun so the, the, the term high capacity it, it, it's, it's a made up term okay high capacity high capacity based on what because somebody Somebody decided that 10 rounds was standard. 10 rounds is never standard. I, I don't know of a, single, of a single gun with a detachable magazine that has seven rounds. I mean, 10, 10 rounds. I mean, they're all, they're all more. Well, you know, sometimes they're less if it's like a, a hunting rifle. You know, sometimes they're three or five. <laughs> In addition to that, it's also a little bit disturbing, uh, the, the bill that addresses... Uh, the obliteration or the changing of numbers on the on the guns, because like I said, I collect firearms. I have I have I could grab you a rifle right now that has a serial number that has a line drawn through it, and then another serial number with electro pencil put next to it, because when it went back to the arsenal, it was refurbished, and that's what they do. So I have a I have an obliterated serial number from one part. <coughs> they went to a gun that doesn't exist anymore and they forced matched it is what they did also I have a, a Japanese rifle that my uncle Al picked up off, uh, off the beach in the South Pacific part of the deal was there's a little mum on the top of it you had to obliterate that you had to damage that well <laughs> you, you're hard pressed to find an Arasaka rifle that hasn't been had a symbol removed or altered. So those, those are the things, I, I understand we don't want people to obliterate serial numbers. Yeah, that's already, uh, already against the law. But there's certain times when it happens. And it happens and then you go to the store and you buy it 
and that's just the way it is. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not changing these things in my garage. I'm buying them from the store. <laughs> so, you know, th- there's a couple of things that I would like to, I, I would like to address. Uh, I'm not going to give support for any of the pro bills because I, last year the governor said that she would veto whatever, you know, pro um, legislation came through, so I'm not even going to talk about that. But that, that's it. Um, also, I, I heard last thing. I heard, I heard a lot about polls. We have, we have almost 700 members, but with the families and everything, there's probably 2,000 people that use my club. I'm pretty sure that if I conducted my own poll, I get overwhelming support that says, we don't like any of this gun stuff, any of this, this, these restrictions. So it's, it's all we ask. But that's all. And uh, I, I, I'd appreciate that, you know, you allow Wallen Lake to continue for another generation or two. That's it. I hope so. Any questions for Paul?